Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees, and I have a show for you that people have been asking me for, so I wanted to make this for your learning and my learning experience. It is about grafting or top working mango trees, and a lot of people ask me about this topic. I have some other fruit trees that I top work, avocados, uh, I'm learning or I want to learn about jackfruit, but mangoes is the one that's most commonly top worked, and I have a tree that I top work, it was a Kerry tree. I have several trees, and I want to show you all of them today. My Grafting experience, uh, getting bud with and grafting is not the best, but I'm thankful it's not the worst either. Um, but I've learned some things along the way that I want to share with you. So there's many different types of grafts out there that you can do, different types of methods of grafting, but I have found best uh, uh, the cliff graft to be the best. That's where you uh, split right down the middle and you kind of, it's like a V going into a, uh, a V. So you get both sides of it. That's what I found uh, to be the easiest for me. But uh, today we're going to work, uh, I'm going to show you a tree that I top worked. This was a Kerry tree here. And this Kerry tree uh, was okay. I mean, it was making a lot of mangoes for many years, but I just didn't, I lost the taste for Kerry. So I know some of you watching going crazy right now saying you love it. But I had a bunch of trees and pots I wanted to get them on here. And uh, my initial goal was to multi-graft this tree, but Alex at Tropical Acres Farm said, no, just put one on there. It'll be better. So I did. And he gave me, I got four grafts from him because some of the trees I have, I have the budwood. Some of the trees I don't have the budwood that I want. So I got four, four grafts from uh, budwoods uh, from Alex at Tropical Acres Farms for a tree that I have. I have a tree that's actually in a pot and... I've tasted this mango. I love this mango. It's called emerald mango. So my first part of top working was, well, what am I going to put on here? And Alex said, well, emerald mango, is, it's, not, it's not a very vigorous tree, so that'd be a good one to put on here. And so that's the one I went with. So I put four grafts on, and two of them took. So I was really uh, happy about that. So this is the first one that took. And this one here, uh, not only did it take, but... If you can see here, it's splitting really well to three different sides. So that's really nice. And that's all I technically need. Once that grows, I'm set. That tree will grow and it'll be nice, I'm set. You see all these little new shoots coming out. I'm, I'm just uh, taking these off because I don't want the energy to go into these new things. Now, something to keep in mind, I left a lot of all this growth here. That's the carry tree. It grew back and I left it. Alex told me until this one gets very established, leave a lot of the other one or a good amount of the other one. But as they come out new here, I am pulling them off. But when you top work a tree, if you do it not too small, these will start to come out. And when these turn uh, greener, like this one, I left this one here just to show you all for the video is, this one's a really nice one. This is the carry one. This is a really nice one to cut and top work if I had to. Uh, but thankfully, the emerald took. I'll get rid of this one. And coming around here, I'll show you my other one that took. See, if I wanted to leave this multi-grafted, I could leave the emerald and the carry, but I don't want the carry. So, and, and by the way, if I cut this back, these trees grow back. As you can see, it's growing back. But here's the other one that took. And this one was more on the other side of the tree, but this is another emerald that took. It's doing great. It's coming out on two sides. So those two, this one and that one alone, will fill up this tree beautifully. So as these continue to grow, I'll continue to take off the carry variety. And I was thinking eventually I was going to cut the tree right here, because, or at least right here, because I don't need all the other space. However... What had happened was, so anyway, so I missed it. I, I put, I put some gra uh, two grafts up there that didn't come out. So what happened was, I had a bunch of grafts and I had nowhere to put them. So I had a, a small tree, a small planted tree. Uh, so I have some trees in pots here, and I had one that it was growing too high. So I just cut the top off of it, and kind of for practice and purposes, I said, let me. Throw one on here and see what happens. Now, I've done many grafts between this and other trees, and they didn't work. But I said, let me see what happens. 
And this one was a Karen Michelle that I had in the ground that I put on here. And it took. And that's coming out. That works. Now I'll have to decide do I want to keep it or not. Alex said it's going to uh, outgrow the emerald so he doesn't recommend it. But it's growing. This is a big surprise because uh, several crafts I've done before this hadn't been working. Then over here, I got some apricot uh, mango scions from Tropical Acres. And this one looks like it's taking as well. Again, these were just experimental, but they look like they're taking. Now here you see new buds coming out below. The graft is here, and this is below. So I'm just going to take these off because I don't want to put energy into the, into the old carry wood. So that took. And then recently I had a fruit punch that was getting too big in the pot. I just nipped off the top and I put it here. And that took. So that was quite a surprise because after none of them taking for quite a while, now I had three take. And they're looking good. So I got my buddy tape up here. I like to use clothespins uh, to hold them together, but I ran out of clothespins. But then I just had this tape here that I just wrapped it up with and that took. So all of this here is the carry tree, which I'm slowly but surely going to start cutting off. Or I could just keep experimenting with to put more varieties on here, but that's not my goal. So now I'm going to show you here. This was before that one. This was my major top work one. This was a Duncan tree. So this was a Duncan tree and at the time, I didn't like Duncan. Now, I, I like Duncan now. At the time, I, I wasn't feeling it. So, what I did was, uh, I had uh, Belly's Marble Tree at the time. So, I took one experimental purposes, and I put it, uh, I know, I put it right here, and it took. So, that was pretty cool. Always label your, your grass, by the way. Uh, so, that was more of experimental. And then, on the other side over here, I have a Sugarloaf. Again, experimental, that one took. But what I really wanted to get on this tree was sunrise. And I have a, a sunrise tree in my neighbor's yard that I planted, but I wanted to put in this yard. So most of these that took here are sunrise. That one took, I had all but one that took that were all sunrise. And then I have still, some of them are Duncan. So this one's become a multi-grafted tree with mostly sunrise. That's a sunrise. That's a sunrise. That's a sunrise. I love sunrise. So the ones that didn't take, I'm going to leave Duncan because I'm liking Duncan now. So that's that tree and that's, that's what took. Now I'm not going to get into my avocados and show you those. Those graphs that I took that worked, but those are two trees here in the yard. And again, a lot of them didn't take, but these did. Now I also tried experimenting with grafting on top of, uh, you know, a tree in a pot. And this area I haven't been the most successful with. Uh, I've only had a few trees that I've had success doing this. But what I did was I grafted the trees in the pot. And ice cream is one that I did here, and it's also what I'm going to be doing in the future. So I'll show you this one here. So this here is my ice cream tree, and I grafted it right here. I forgot. It was just a seedling, actually. I had a lot of seedlings, but this was one of the only few that took. So it's grown really nicely. Now my goal is to get these ice cream... Uh, uh, budwood and put them on this tree here. This was a cog's hole that I didn't like and this is perfect ready for grafting right now. So I'm going to get my go to my ice cream tree and get some budwood and try to graft those now and see how those work out. So that was a see I cut this tree back I cut this tree back all the way and they started growing again. So these, this is perfect and ready for grafting right now. So I'm going to go to my ice cream tree and check out and try to get some budwood. And I'm going to show you an ice cream, another tree that I top worked. Okay, everybody. So check this tree out. This tree 
was an I uh, was a, a seedling tree that my old tenant had of a Gary, and it came out finally, but it just what didn't taste good. So before I determined it didn't taste good, I was waiting. I did lose my little gem, so I put a little gem graft on here, and that took. So that was going to be the one tree that I was going to keep there, but it's too small for this spot. This, I needed a dwarfized tree, and ice cream was the answer. So I did this and grafted, and all of my ice cream grafts took on this one. So it worked out great, but this side of the tree, I didn't get those grafts, but since then, I did another graft, and the ice cream worked. So this tree has now been converted to ice cream. So I could also take budwood off this tree and use it for my other tree. So this tree is just looking wonderful. And I'm gonna look to see if there's any budwood on here that I might be able to use. But besides that, I wanna go here and show you the ice cream tree that I got budwood with that from. So this is the ice cream tree, my original ice cream tree that I had in the ground here. It actually doesn't even look as good as those. It's getting shaded out by this white sepulta here in my neighbor's yard. But here's where I got the budwood for that. So I'm gonna try to take budwood from this tree and the tree in the front and move it over to the one in my yard and try to top work, top work that. So that's what I'm hoping to do today. Now, coming along here, this is my latest two grafting projects. These, this is a seedling tree in not the best spot as a seedling just to see what would happen. And I decided, well, it's growing, so I'll graft on top of it. And I put some foil on here, but I don't think any of these took. Nope, that one didn't take. That one didn't take. You see, you all thought I was a good grafter until you see this. Well, that one took. Beautiful, <laughs> nice. Now, if I only remembered which one it was now. Okay, I'm pretty sure that one's, uh, see, out here I'm gonna take these, these buds off now. So that one took. So this tree now has become a Karen uh, Michelle tree. So that's super exciting. That, that took and it seems interesting because the budwood that I'm getting from Alex is working for the most part and my budwood I've not had as much success with but I believe that's Karen Michelle so now I got a Karen Michelle tree growing here but these other ones didn't take but that's that's a nice surprise alrighty now I'm coming over here and this is I had one more wow that's amazing I had one more uh, scion left and I didn't know where to put it and that is a seedling tree and I didn't know where to put it but I had this seedling tree I think I'm going to get rid of that one that's a pickering eventually and this one's uh I might get rid of as well but right here it looks like it's taking Wow, so all these budwoods that I'm getting from Alex seem to be working great. Uh, Tropical Lagos Farms, I'll put the link below. That's the place you want to get budwood when they sell it. Because it does make a difference of when you pick the budwood, uh, if it's the right kind of budwood. But if that takes, this seedling tree will now be an ap uh, apricot tree. And I only have one, but that's all you really need. So, that's exciting. So I would end up Probably cutting back the rest and just leaving that or we'll try to get more budwood on there for that. But that's pretty exciting. So everything else here in the yard is looking really good. But I'm going to go get that ice cream budwood now and see what I could do for that. So there's the ice cream tree. Let's see if any... Let's, I'm gonna, I can't do it with two hands, but I'm gonna try to get some of this budwood and then I'll show you how I'm gonna graft that other tree. Okay, everybody, I got some active buds from the trees. 
Some of them look very promising. Uh, they have like swollen buds, if you could see. And they all look pretty promising, except this one, I kind of messed that one up a little. I don't know if I need all these. That was from the main tree, but then after the newly grafted tree, I took two more. And basically, you want to make sure there's like a bump or a little swollen bud. It's not the ideal. And I like this to be a little bit fatter. But what I've learned is if you graft green on green, that's your best chance for the budwood taking. So I'm taking the leaves off here now. Now what this is called, I'm preparing the budwood. So I'm taking the leaves off here now, preparing the budwood. And then I'm going to try this one more here. I'll show you. I'm taking the leaves off. So you want to prepare the budwood and then you want to prepare the tree. Okay, so here's the budwood. And so I have one, two, three, four, five, seven. Seven chances for this to take. So you want to prepare the budwood and then you want to prepare the tree. So now I'm going to start preparing the tree and I'm going to first get my, my, my grafting tools and we'll check that out. Okay, so now we're going to wrap the, the scion and then I'm using buddy tape. I like to use buddy tape. Other people use other things, but I like to use buddy tape. And people ask me when is the best time to graft and people can graft all year, but I like to graft when it's warmer out. I think I have better success when it's warmer out. And... I'm going to wrap the whole top completely. And you want to wrap this so no water gets in. So there's that. So remember, you want to wrap the top completely. And people use other things other than it might be something called grafting tape or there's uh, some other things people wrap it with in. But I like to use the, the buddy tape. It's just, I, I just seem to have a more success with it. So this is preparing the science. So one of the questions I had when I first started was, do you wrap the top completely? And I figured out the answer is yes. You want to make sure it's all wrapped up. And you don't want to wrap the whole thing. You want to leave the bottom because that's the part you're going to grab. So now I'm going to prepare the tree. Let's see. So here's the tree. And what I got to do is, on the tree, first I'm going to move this ice cream out of the way so we can get a better focus here. And I'm going to cut or take out a bunch of the weeds. Let's properly see what's going on here. All right. All right. So here's the tree. So I want to use the best ones I can get. And I have to size them up with the graphs that I have. So that's pretty good size. So Remember, you don't want to go too high up because you don't want the original mango to grow through those. So I'm going to cut these leaves here. And when I say from green on green, so this is green. It was just it was just cut this this scion. See, it's green, and this is green. Some people will put when these are black and just seem to have better success with green on green. We'll see how many actually take. I don't even need that one. I'll cut that one out. So I'm going to cut, let's say, right there. So that's ready to be grafted on. Now, 
If I wanted to use this, if I wanted to put Cogsole on another tree, I would just prepare that for the other tree, but I don't want Cogsole, so I'm going to get rid of that. So here's the tree, and it's ready now. So I'm going to do that on a couple of more of these, and then I'll show you how we grass. Okay, so I prepared the tree. These are all ready to be grafted onto now. Uh, you take most of the leaves off on a small tree like this because you don't want the energy going into the leaves. You want it to go into the new grafts that you're putting on. But I left one or two leaves on too, so it still has something to feed in the meantime. So now, hopefully before the rain comes, I'll be able to get this done and I'll show you all. Okay, so the only thing I'm really going to need now is this here. And this is what I'm going to tie the graph on with. So I'm going to get a razor blade now. Some people use a grafting knife. I like to use a razor blade. You just have to uh, be careful. I, I, I feel comfortable using a razor blade now. I used to have to wear gloves when I used my razor blade. because, But now I feel comfortable doing it. So basically... I got the graft here, and I'm going to see where it fits best on it. I like it. I like it right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to prepare this where I can cut this here and get it ready. So I'll cut it right here. And then I'm going to try to get two sides of that smooth. That's really nice. One, two, because the key is at the end right here, you want it to connect with one of the sides to this here. So now I'm just going to cut right there like that. So I cut a hole right in the middle of that. And now I'll try to redo this video with somebody holding the camera so it's close. So you just slip that in right there. And there's, there's, this is a little smaller than this, but as long as you get one side when you do this type of graph, it's going to be fine. So as long as one side matches up, and let me show you what I mean. One side has to match up evenly there. I'm not concerned with the other side, at least one side is going to match. And then, depending on how big the tree is, this is a shady area, so I don't, I don't need to put anything on top, but you still want to get it somewhat tight. And this is what I sometimes use clothespins on, this part. So it kind of squeezes it together. And I'm not an expert at doing this. My neighbor taught me this. But as you see, I've had some success. So you want to get this on the tighter side. And the reason why I prepare the scions first is I, you don't want to be messing with it once it's here because you don't want to move it. So I want to come over here. Just tie that. All right, there it is. So if I had a paper clip, I would, or a clothespin, I would put it right here. Not a paper clip, a clothespin, just to make that tighter. But that's it. As I said, some people cover this so it doesn't get too much sun. But that's how I do it. So now I'll go ahead and 
try to complete the other one. Okay, so I finished my graphs here. And you want to graft as close to the tree as possible so the old mango variety is not going to keep coming through. So considering this is low, this one's going to be okay because it'll grow. I'm sitting on the floor here, so this is only below my knee. So this is fine. This is perfect, actually. These aren't the best grafts. They weren't all swollen buds, but we'll see how they do. I didn't need seven, but I got seven. So hopefully at least one of the seven will come out. You only need one. So let's say this one comes out and the other six fail. Well, that's the one I'm going to grow into my new tree. Remember, you only need one to work. And, uh, and as I was saying, the reason why I, I prepare it first before I attach it, because I don't want to prepare it now and start shaking things up because I have it perfectly matched. Now I'll redo this video another time with somebody else to hold the camera to show you exactly how close and precise what I do. But that's the gist of it. That's the idea. This spot is not a big spot at all. It won't be as shaded when I cut the other trees back. But I had a cog's hole, which is considered a, a dwarf side tree, dwarf size tree, and these are all dwarf size. This is a ice cream, a dwarf size, and here's another ice cream I did in a in a pot at one time. A dwarf size. So in general, I don't know if I'd even plant ice cream in the ground because they grow well in the pot. But I got some in the ground and some in the pots. This is one of my favorite tasting mangoes. Production-wise, it remains to be seen how it'll do. I haven't heard great things about the production of it, but we'll see. All right. If anyone, I, I like to leave these here just for. I remember what I did. I could also take a marker and label these if I did different varieties. But I got seven grafts on here. I cut the old grafts off, of the old trees off. And we'll see how it goes. Now, ideally, if this wasn't a shady spot, I would cover this in foil or a paper bag or something. Just so it didn't get too much sun on it. But it's not sunny at this spot at all, so I think we'll just be fine. All right. So there is some grafting. Now, you'll know if it worked. As long as this stays green, there's still a chance it'll work. But eventually, uh, when it's successful, a new sprout will pop out like you've seen in my other, the other ones I showed. You just want to make sure that the, everything's covered right now. And the sprout will pop out if the graft takes. Okay, these are the three things I use for graft. And this is the buddy tape. It's quite expensive for one roll, but that's the buddy tape. They do sell it on eBay and other places, but I'll put an Amazon link to it if you want to get that. This is the parafilm. This is what I used to use. It's thicker than the buddy tape. I, I like the buddy tape better. That, that's parafilm, and that's what a lot of people at Graft use. I, uh, so that's that. And then there's this, which I've been using and I really like. I'll put an Amazon link to this as well to all of these. And remember, you want to get a razor blade or a grafting knife. It's very helpful. And yeah, that's it. All right, everybody. Thank you for checking that out. I hope those grafts take. I'll keep you all updated. I'm going to put a link below to the products I was using. And we'll see how if, they t if they take or not. Uh, sometimes I use clothespins as well as I told you. I'll put a link below to that as well from my Amazon store. But if you have comments or questions, post them below, and I apologize. I only had one hand, so I couldn't hold the camera up close to what I was doing. But I will do another video like that in the future, holding it up close so you can get a better, seeing it better. But make, make sure one side of the graft is matched even. That's why I like that particular type of graft, because one side matches even. You don't have to match both sides perfectly. Okay, everybody. It's a couple of days later, so usually it takes, before you start noticing the grafts to take, if they're not successful, you pretty much know quickly because everything just turns black. From the from the the whole scion that you added turns black. As long as there's still some green in there, 
there's a good chance it, it might take. Usually that happens between two and three weeks. Usually. Now, I've had some that didn't pop out for a while. So this, see, this is green. And eventually if it takes, it'll stop popping out of here. It'll break right through the plastic. And again, as long as this is green, there's a chance that might happen. From my experience, if it's not going to take, this turns black kind of quickly within a week. The whole thing's black. You realize it didn't take. Usually, it takes about two to three weeks before you see something popping out in some cases. But I have had cases where up to three months, this stayed green and nothing popped out. And then something came out. So the interesting thing here on these graphs that I did, within a couple of days, I guess I got it just at the right time. This popped out. So that graph looks like it took. It's been raining a lot. Again, normally I wouldn't cover these. Uh, you don't want water to get in there, so... You don't want water to get in there. But that one looks like it took within a couple of days, which just amazes me. And nothing else on these other ones. Now, somebody who's really experienced at grafting mentioned, I should have left the leaves below the graft to, to bring more energy so the, so the stem would be feeding the plants below the graft. I don't disagree. This man has a lot more experience than I do. As a matter of fact, I did that over here. I left this leaf and this leaf for those reasons. But I was also told by somebody else who has experience, not as much experience as that other person is, you want to take the leaves off because you don't want to be the energy going to feeding the leaves. You want it to go to the graft. Again, that first man is a lot more experienced, but I took the I took it off, and right away he told me, "Why'd you take them off?" The man said. But as you can see, I left one or two, but I had the opportunity to leave more, so maybe I should have. So as of now, we're looking green, still green. They're all still green and looking nice. So, there's still a shot. We'll see what happens. Now, I'm going to put a link below to the supplies I'm using. So, you can check that out. And if you want to get this particular tape or the buddy tape, I'll put some Amazon links below. And this is a tree stump that's already here that I had a cog tool here and I cut it here and these new graphs started to come out. A couple of things to keep in mind if you're going to do this. One thing is, well I guess it doesn't matter if you cut below the graft of the original tree or not because let's say the person before put a cog tool here and I cut it here. Whatever's going to come out is not going to be the cog tool, it's going to be the original seedling. But if your plan is to top work, I guess that doesn't matter either way. But that's one way to do this. Another way is you could have went right into the bark and put the budwood. Right, there's a method of where, you, where you stick it right in the bark, right in the stump here, and it grows that way. So that's another method I've seen some people do online. But this is considered a top work. So that's considered a top work. Now over here I have this tree here which I haven't had much success doing it this way, but this tree I actually had. This was a seedling that I grew. And right over here, I put an ice cream graft, and it's growing. This, this has been my least successful way to graft, even though this particular one is growing. I haven't had mu as much success. I don't know the specifics of the timing of when you graft them or whatever the case is, but this graft, here as you can see took and this was done quite a while ago and it just happens to be ice cream but that took and that's great now hopefully this will these will take here and uh, 
Ice cream is one that's not known to fruit well, but the taste is so great people still plant it. And some people have a delicious tasting fruit. This is my third ice cream tree in the ground. I have, as we said, uh, one in the ground, and then I had one that was already in the ground, and I top worked that to an ice cream and everything took. And now there's this one, and then I have three in pots. When this is one of those three. And one that I've had in a pot is, is bigger than the ones I have in the ground that's pretty big. So that's that. All right, everybody. So when it comes to grafting, there's many different ways and many ideas and many different types of grafts. And people have different opinions about all of these things. But I can tell you one thing everyone agrees with. Practice, practice, practice. That's how you get the experience. The more you practice, the more you do this, even if you just have a, a tree that you love, you don't plan on top working anything else, if you have some uh, scions or budwood from there that you can spare, especially when you know, you're trimming trees, cut off as many as you can take and try grafting them on either the same tree or another tree just for practice to see and, and, and get the good feel with this. You know, during mango season, plant a whole bunch of seedlings. So when they come up, practice, practice, practice. The reason why I don't have a lot of success on doing these is uh, I don't do that enough. I, I, I haven't tried enough, but I'm sure if I took a whole summer and dedicated to that, by the end of the summer, I'll have a lot more success rate on those. So that is uh, it's about grafting. If you have any tips or suggestions, post them below the video. And again, the products uh, that I use for grafting, I will put below in the in the a link so you can check that out because I know most people know about the buddy tape not a lot of people use this but people use different types of things some people use the Teflon tape uh, some people use paper clip I mean clothes hangers so do that like I do sometimes but that's that all right everybody thank you for watching post your comments questions below if you have a yard you want me to come out and film I'd love to <laughs> I really enjoy that uh, just my links below if you want to contact me. My email is below in the description. Until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.